Hi, this is D5 Render, welcome to this tutorial. We'll demonstrate how to adjust materials and lights in an interior scene. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel. First, we need to make some preparations. Turn off auto exposure, set HDRI to pure white, and adjust its light intensity to the highest value, add this scene to the scene list. Before setting lights, we need to check the glass and the curtain, ensuring optimal light efficiency in the environment. For the glass, set the base color to white and the transparency value to 1, which means it's fully transparent now. For the curtain, change the material template to foliage and check invisible and ray tracing. Add an opacity map. Turn on inverted, and stretch its UV scale, to get a dense grain. Copy and paste this texture, to other parts of the curtain. Now, it looks clear enough for light, to travel through. After completing the preparation, we can start lighting arrangement, which is very easy. For ambient lighting, we use a rectangular light and rotate it by 90 degrees, to vertical. Adjust its size to be slightly larger than the window. Set its attenuation radius to the highest value. Move it outside. Next, tilt it downwards to simulate the ambient light. You can see the interior scene becomes very bright. Move on to edit materials. Here we give the latex paint a distressed look to fit the vintage style of the scene. Add a black and white patterned map to the base color map and adjust its UV to a proper size. Decrease the contrast to a negative value so that the map and the color are well blended. The higher the contrast, the more visible the distressed effect will be. Copy and paste the map into the roughness column. Increase the specular and lower the roughness. You can see the ceiling has uneven reflections on its latex paint surface. The wood floor's color should suit the environment of the interior space. To simulate the slab joints, we need a normal map with a proper value. Want to know how to make this normal map? Remember to follow us and stay tuned. Subsurface scattering materials can create realistic translucent objects, such as this bunch of grapes. Change its material template to subsurface scattering. Increase the value of V in this subsurface color so that the grape becomes clearer. If it still looks dull, you can pull up the scattering intensity. Next, let's adjust some paper and fabric materials. Change the material of the fabric sofa to cloth which gives it whitish edges. Set a proper color tone. Import a velvet texture map to the normal column so that the sofa will have a realistic grain. Here's a trick to help you better edit the velvet effect. First, pull the normal value to the maximum. After setting a proper UV, you can decrease the normal to a smaller value. A realistic lampshade should allow light to travel through. To reproduce this feature, you just need a cloth material in D5 Render. We add a wrinkled texture map to the normal column so that it will have a grain of the paper. After placing a warm light inside, you can see how lifelike the lamp is. Next, we'll adjust some metal materials. It takes only two steps to create an ordinary metal, reducing the roughness value and raising its metallic to the highest. Yet a modeled metal, such as the lower part of this table, needs a grained map at the base color map column. Set the normal intensity to zero and adjust its UV. Copy and paste the map to metallic and roughness. Now you get a modeled metal. It works the same to produce a distressed metal, such as this screen. All you need is a brass texture map. Think about the real world, metals often have scratches on their surfaces. Here we add a scratch texture map at the metallic column. Adjust its UV size. 
and paste it to the base color map, which can make the scratches more obvious. The individual UV should be switched off to ensure scratches look consistent. Finally, ribbed glass. Add a texture map of the ribbed glass at the normal and increase its value. Increasing the refraction value can make the normal texture more obvious. You can stop the adjustment when the letters on the books and the cabinet become blurred. The optimized emissive effect in D5 Render 2.4 provides soft light transition and shadow details, take this black chandelier as an example. Turn on emissive for the small bulbs. The default bloom effect at 0.2 may look overwhelming, so we reduce it to 0.15. Then adjust intensity to the highest value and switch off the cast shadow option, so that the emissive effect will not affect the lighting environment. Repeat this process on the white chandelier. Add a point light inside, and adjust its color temperature. Set the light source radius to the maximum, while reducing the attenuation radius to barely cover the lamp. In this way, there will be a soft and realistic light transition. To get an ideal lighting effect, we can render an image first, checking exposure and brightness. If not satisfied with the light and shadow, you can switch on the HDRI Sun as ambient lighting. The advanced GI and real-time ray tracing solutions of D5 Render enable sufficient lighting and detailed shadows. Remember to adjust the sun's azimuth, intensity, and disk radius to create better effects. That completes our video. Thanks for watching.